What's up, everybody? Mike here from SomeShitWeLike.com, and Rick and I, cameraman Rick, we are here at uh, Long Beach Comic Expo. We're going to go inside, check out some comics, do some interviews. Uh, our buddy Scott Lost is here with his comic. Uh, issue 4 is out now, uh, scottlostcomics.com. Uh, we're going to go inside, check out some stuff, uh, maybe pick up some merch, and we'll, uh, we'll be back here on SomeShitWeLike.com. What's up, guys? Back here again on SomeShitWeLike.com with Kevin and Victor of Man vs. Rock. Man vs. Rock. All right. Uh, tell us about it. Well, Man vs. Rock is really the story of us all. It's about this crazy geology professor named Buck Stone who thinks that rocks are out to get us. Why rocks? Because in his mind, from the beginning of time, we've done ridiculous things to abuse the rocks. Like, for example, built the pyramids from the rocks. In his mind, we crucified a rock instead of Jesus on the cross. And we waterboarded the rocks to find Bin Laden. So of course, he thinks it's only a matter of time before the rocks strike back. And he takes his crazy theories to the street and society reacts. So if you think that reading is rad like this guy, you'll love Man vs. Rock. And if you love the band Creed and the last Indiana Jones 4 movie, then you'll also love Man vs. Rock. All right, but what if you hate those things? I'm assuming you'll still love Man vs. Rock? Uh, no, actually. Uh, okay. Then I don't want to talk to you anymore because, because Indiana Jones 4 was awesome and the band Creed is revolutionary. And the, fa the, the last Star Wars trilogy, by the way, ruined it for me. Okay. Like, you know, the, the, the yeah. Dead Empire Strikes Back. Uh -huh. So, that's awesome. The, so, okay, what do you do on the comic? Would you like to answer this yes. one, Tall what Man? Do you, what do you guys do, sir? We write it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we're co-writers. Our artist is in San Diego. Okay. Yeah. He's uh, rocking out. He's in a rock band. Uh, not really. I just thought I'd say that, but it didn't sound that cool. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, yeah. I, I'm in charge of the uh, Ponzi scheme. I mean, I mean the writing. Okay. And, and he helps out. Like we're co-writers, and we have our artists in San Diego. Very sweet. Um, so how did? What I don't know. What was involved in, in coming up with this concept? Was it alcohol? Uh, was it heavy well, drug usage? We were really drunk. Was it watching Indiana Jones four <laughs> far too many times in a row? It'll you know, do we're things really to drunk, you. And he put his rocks in my mouth. Okay. And I was like, I am destined in this world to be against these rocks. And I thought about running for president on an anti-rock platform. I'd have voted for you. Yeah. So as you can see, what? lots of PCP was used in the creation of this book. Awesome. Very uh, cool, man. Uh, do you guys have a website or anything where we can, other people can uh, check do, it out? We do. Every now and then we send up smoke signals. Oops. Like, yeah, yeah. And hope that cutting people... Edge. Cutting yeah. edge technology. I we like also it. do, um, what's that stuff called? Um, chemtrails. Well, like, we, uh, <laughs> we hired the government to do some chemtrails for us to brainwash people so they'd read Man vs. Rock. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. You can read more about it on our website, www.espn.com. Awesome. <laughs> um, we do have a website. It's called uh, bandversusrock.com. Okay. And uh, we're on Comixology, Amazon, all that great stuff. Oh, sweet. And, okay. uh, yeah, um, you know, so yeah, we also have an ad coming out in Dynamite Comics. So, you know, this March. So get your Dynamite Comics and tell them uh, how much you love Man vs. Rock. So you said on uh, Comixology and Amazon. I do a lot of my comic reading nowadays on a Kindle, so that's all good to go. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah. Sweet, yeah. man. Very good. Better than on a rock. <laughs> so, who, who reads off of a rock? Yeah, seriously? nobody does anymore because of us. All right. We stopped that. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for talking to us, Kevin. Thank you for having us. And Victor? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I love it. So there you go. Manversusrock.com, some shit we like.com. Thanks for watching. All right. Welcome back to some shit we like.com. I'm Mike here with We of We Arts. All right. Uh, make sure you get some footage of these awesome cards. Uh, how long have you been drawing? I've been drawing since the age of two, actually, and then all this stuff, um, I've just started maybe ten months ago. Um, I usually, I haven't really posted my work up in like years, but yeah, so there's all kind of side stuff, kind of fun hobby, during lunchtime sketches and stuff like that, but yeah. I see a lot of different characters that spread a lot of different genres, like yeah. do you have anything in particular that you like, or do you just like drawing anything? Uh, you know what, I like drawing superheroes, and I guess um, Batman. Yeah, it is kind of like my uh, kind of my go-to, and then obviously anything that's trending, I tend to actually you know uh, sketch too. Like you know, like if uh, there's rumors that there might be 
Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange. I'll do a sketch or something of that. So that's kind of the stuff I do. Oh, very cool, man. Um, how are you enjoying uh, Long Beach Comic Expo so far? It's good. I'm not, this is my first show. So I'm just kind of getting used to actually, you know, selling stuff, standing, talking to people, and then doing all this stuff. But yeah, it's fun. I've always been just a spectator or, a, a, you know, attendee. Now I'm behind exhibiting. So it's kind of cool. So yeah. So uh, this being your first con, yeah. how's the turnout been? You get a lot of foot traffic? Yeah, not bad actually. You know, I get um, waves where I get like a good half dozen people, and then there'll be moments where no one shows up. So it's actually kind of cool. I get a nice up and down. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Is, is, is that kind of nerve wracking when you're sitting here and there's nobody comes up? And no, you know, yesterday, in the, since my first show yesterday, was a little nerve wracking in the beginning, but then I realized that's okay. And then I went and grabbed a drink and came back and, you know, it felt great. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Very cool, man. Uh, thanks for talking to us. Your art's awesome. Do you have a website or anything people can go to? I have an Instagram, which is the information right here. Cool. Um, it's just WeArts at we Instagram and then Tumblr. And yeah, pretty much. That's it. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on Some Shit We Like and talking to us. Absolutely. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. What's up, everybody? Mike here for SomeShitWeLike.com, and I'm here with comic book artist extraordinaire Scott Lost, <laughs> yeah. uh, a creator and artist on The Second Shift, right? Yes. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, your writing partner is over at the table, hopefully selling some he merchandise. Is hopefully, yeah, selling our stuff and, um, you know, maybe himself, whatever, whatever right. makes us money. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Comics first, then his body, so. So tell me about your uh, Long Beach Comic Expo experience so far. Uh, this is my first time at the Expo. We usually do a Long Beach Comic Con uh, in September. Um, and I'm splitting a booth with a friend from the first Long Beach we went to. And uh, yeah, you know it's 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 been okay so far. I can't complain. Yeah. Um, have a lot of people come by, like interested about the book or about the art and all that? Yeah, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, I have a lot of prints available, but everyone seems more interested in the book, which is a great thing. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's more of the you know what we're here for is to get the book out there, get people interested in the comic, um, and you know you just you do the print you know, to basically take care of the expenses of a con experience, but everyone seems more interested in the book, and that's that's not a bad thing. That's great, man. Uh, so you did a Kickstarter for the first issue, yeah. and made enough extra to print the second issue, yes. correct? And then you did the same thing with the third issue. Yeah, exactly. You made enough to print the fourth issue. Yes. So how many issue arc is this story you're trying to tell? Uh, the first story arc is five issues long, so there's one more to go, and we'll be doing a Kickstarter for that. Um, if you follow me on any social media, I'll be updating those uh, with you know, the start date and everything. Um, I'm halfway done drawing the fifth issue, okay. and as soon as I finish up or get towards like the last couple of pages, then that's when we'll get the Kickstarter going, and uh, we want to make sure the book is done before uh, you know, we get the Kickstarter out there. You know, we just we want to make sure we're good on our promises and and you know we don't want to be uh, someone that leaves Kickstarter with a bad experience you know you don't hear from uh, the creators and you know never you never get your product yeah. so for us it's really important to have the book um, at least drawn and that way everyone else can go in the letterer and the colorist and everything and uh, just finish up the book and send it off to the printers uh, your colorist Joaquin Pereira yeah yes uh, I love the style he brings to your art with his colors yes yeah he's he's amazing uh, I couldn't be happier you know it's I did a, a little uh, a little uh, thing on a colorist website asking you know here's here's what I can afford to pay you and and you know here's the project and you know I got tons of responses but no one at the level of Joaquin and so he's you know been with me ever since and you know it's 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 just a blessing to have found that guy and uh, he's actually working I believe he works for Vertigo right now also okay. so he's plenty busy um, but you know we're friends now and so even though he's he's uh, in the big leagues he's uh, you know still hanging with us because of, you know just the friendship and and uh, I think that our styles have really like melded together um, and also with my letterer uh, Ian and Cabo he started on issue three and you know it's kind of a feeling out process and in the fourth issue uh, between my art and Joaquin's colors and Ian's uh, lettering like it feels like one piece of art you know it doesn't feel like three things it feels like one complete unit and that's and that's really what you want uh, from you know on the art side of, of the comic so in continuing with that theme of collaboration um, talked to you about this before uh, we did an interview with you after the first Kickstarter yeah uh, drink it on some shit we like.com um, 
Tell me about what it's like taking these characters that you've had in your brain for a long time and then like turning them over to someone like Ed to write for you or to collaborate with. What's that process like? Uh, and I, is it hard to like let go of that piece of you, so to speak? No, not 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 really. Um, the collaboration between uh, me and Ed, it's, it's really strong because it's like he'll, you know, when I first, when I first like sought out a, a writer, you know, I have two friends. I have Bob Ramos and I have, you know, Ed who... Uh, are really talented writers and so I said hey you know I want to draw my book here's what my characters are like do you guys want to do a pitch and then and they're like okay and I was like okay you know right here's their personalities here's their quirks here's their aspirations their dreams or whatever this is what they're like um, put them in a restaurant have them have a conversation let me let me hear what that sounds like and uh, Ed wrote the heroes perfectly it sounded like every single uh, character I have it sounded like their voice and and for me, that was really important. And where Bob succeeded was in the villain. His villain was really strong. So um, if, if you've read issue one, it opens up in the restaurant and the villain's there and, you know, he ends up doing some very bad things. But the pitch that I had them do actually took place right before that scene. So what's not in the comic is uh, the heroes were at that same restaurant, but they just happened to leave while that guy walked in. And then, so Bob continued the story from there. So he uh, he did the hero thing, and then he went straight into the villain, and that. And so Bob wrote that in the intro with the villain and stuff like that. So very cool, man. And like you just you also brought up like you guys doing like one cohesive piece of art. Yeah. Um, so after issue five, uh, where you go from there with these characters? Do you do you anthologize it or whatever? Move these characters into a different setting or? What do you have planned for these characters? Um, right now, uh, issue six is going to be a one shot, okay. and we're going to we're going to try to do something a little different. It's more of a uh, I want to say like a, a dark horse style numbering. In dark horse, what they what they mainly do is they renumber each uh, miniseries, each storyline. They end up uh, renumbering it so that way you could constantly have a jumping on point. This is you know you know Hellboy you know, uh, in hell or whatever, uh, whatever, and it's issue one. Right. And then so you can pick that up and go, oh, you know, and then you could follow that storyline. We want, we want the people to feel like they can hop on at those story arc jumps. So I'm trying something a little different. Uh, on the cover, you know, where the number usually is, it'll say one shot. So if someone's coming by and they go, oh, hey, it's a one shot. I could read this and self-contained, um, but it'll also be numbered six. Okay. So you get best of both worlds. Like I like the high number comics. I like com comics that are like 276 or whatever. Right. And it's just like, you know, I want to get to the point where the book is just a high numbered book, but I still want it on the cover treatment where someone looks at it and if they're just a casual fan, they'll go, oh, one of four, you know? And so they'll go, they'll, they'll have the jumping on point. But for the large number collector like myself, you'll be able to go, oh, number six, right? I have number one through five. And, um, and then after the one shot, the one shot will actually introduce another hero in their world um and it's another filipino character um you know like you know i'm half filipino so that's you know really important to me to like have my culture out there and everything like that so i'm trying to make a well-rounded world you know in the comic book world you know it's getting better where it's more diverse and um but you know a large large amount of uh, the superhero world it's it's you know caucasian superheroes that's you know that's fine and nothing wrong with that but i'm trying to integrate a bit of everything right. into the world and just make it a little more well-rounded and then uh after the one shot we have a two issue story arc uh introducing a new villain and uh yeah so, so keep going from there very cool man um sorry before we get you all your uh social media and everything you get your plugs out there yeah. i have a very important question for you may 2nd what are you going to be doing may 2nd yes no idea. You should be saying Pacquiao versus Mayweather. Oh, that's right. Yes, May that's second. right. That is right. That is 100% yeah. what I knew. I'll be watching that for sure. Uh, right. More than likely at a bar. Okay. Um, unless my family has a huge thing, you know, we usually order the fights. So, yeah, that's okay. that's for sure what's going on that day. So It's going it's to be fun uh, chatting with you on that day. Cause I I'll, thought you were trying I'm, to trick me. I'm no, like, no, is, no. That, is that the... Uh, I'm a Mayweather SoCal fan. Pro wrestling dates, No, that's you know. March 14th. Shout out SoCal Pro. <laughs> yep. uh, so I thought you were, I'm like, is he trying to get me to commit and we're going to end up at no, Pizza no, Port? No. 
you will. Oh, you will eventually. That's going to happen. All right, but yeah, all right. So, yeah, I'm a Mayweather guy. Okay. You're obviously a Pacquiao yes, guy. Yes, yeah. Uh, so it's going to be very fun It's it's going to be a, to watch that fight finally. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that people keep mentioning when they talk about the Pacquiao-Mayweather fight, the first people, the casual person goes, oh, it should have happened five years ago. Who cares? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Sorry you don't know anything. Exactly. You know, uh, for one. Uh, all right. If you listen to professionals uh, in the in the boxing world, you know they'll tell you that this will probably be more of an even fight than it would have been five years ago. Uh, you know both both fighters are past their prime a bit, and it evens a playing field where where Pacquiao lost some power. He still has his speed and he still has uh, a lot of strength. Not as strong as he used to be, right. but he's still very strong, a heavy hitter. And uh, Mayweather is known for his defense. Now his defense is still fantastic yeah however he's lost half of a step on his defense if you've watched the recent fights Pacquiao is still crazy quick yep. but he hasn't been knocking people out Mayweather his defense is still really strong but he has been hit multiple times and you can see it in his face he's like what just happened he's not used to getting hit I'm super excited for this fight so man. and the thing with Pacquiao is he is a juggernaut he will keep coming at you he just never stops never stops and and uh, not like the other fighters when when other fighters hit you with jabs they're just jabs yeah him they are they're jabs but they're punches to your face they're like hard punches so it's going to be good um i think it's going to be more of an even playing field than people think and, and so it should be a great fight yeah uh, the thing i like about pacquiao even though i'm a mayweather guy is that even when you you can physically see that his body is tired his hands keep going no yeah. matter what he never lets up yeah because you know you let up that's when you get knocked out and uh, he, he knows that so he never lets up right. so i'm really excited for that fight yeah so, it yeah. should be really good really uh, good so yeah, there you have it. Scott Lost, do you want to give out your social media, websites, all that stuff? Go for it, man. Yeah, uh, I am at scottlostcomics.com, or you could catch me on facebook.com backslash scottlost, or on Twitter and Instagram, at scottlost, one word, S-C-O-T-T-L-O-S-T. -T -T -T. Um, I also do a podcast. It's called The Boomcast. You can find that at scottlostcomics.com backslash boomcast. And while you're there, check out The Second Shift. It, it will be under the tab, The Second Shift, at scottlostcomics.com. Uh, there you go, guys. Scott Lost, thanks for coming on. No, thank Being you. Being a part of this video, man. No, thank you. Appreciate it.